Hi, I'm Sammy, and this is another Friday Sews. Oh yeah, I'm, I know I'm wearing the same dress as like two Friday Sews ago. I feel like um, I'm not allowed to wear the same outfit twice on Friday Sews. It's, it reminds me of those high school years where I had a friend who wrote down every outfit she wore every day so she wouldn't repeat any outfit twice. Um, that's probably not gonna happen here. You're probably gonna see me in one of four outfits for every Friday Sews, just to warn you, so. And this is my current favorite. <laughs> So this week I had a more of a normal week than my anything goes week and so except for the fact that um, non-slip paint that I ordered for my rugs that I sewed it still hasn't arrived and so I had to kind of come up with a impromptu stream yesterday and I ended up doing the do it better yourself free leggings pattern called ABB which means anything but basic and sometimes you see do it yourself better patterns listed as diby patterns so um it took me a bit to find them because i heard of people talking about them and um, i have them here to show you this is the fabric that i got when i went on my trip um, and went to mill end fabric store in uh, oregon and i wanted a fabric that would be less noticeable so that when I made some undershorts for wearing under dresses, it wouldn't be as noticeable as like a black if I was wearing like a white dress or a light color dress. And so I got this and then I got what I thought was matching lace, but lately it doesn't look like it matches as well as I, it did when I got it. <laughs> um, I opted for the wider waistband and it was very fast to sew, so fast that I didn't like the way I attached the lace the first time. So I cut it off, cut it off and then I did it again and I really like the way this turned out this is pretty nice. I just overlocked it on and then cover stitched it. So it has this finish here. I don't know if this is exactly what I would do forever, but I like this method so far. Um, the only quirk I will say about this pattern, and I did the Mrs. pattern, not the plus size, is that the grade on this center front rise is flipped. It's um, going the opposite direction it should. It all still sews together. The side seams match up, um, and it and it works fine. Like it fits pretty good. Uh, it's I feel like they're kind of loose, but I think it's because this fabric has so much stretch, and it does have this little kind of a you can see like right here maybe that it has this kind of bump right here. It's kind of more of a three dimensional bump, <laughs> like it's it, it's like cupped like this, uh, and I think that's because it had to get. This grade was correct and it had to get all the way down to the front to the wrong grade so but like i said it actually works really well if i made these again i'd probably do the narrower waistband because it doesn't i didn't really need this width but i was looking looking for a short to wear under dresses so that my legs don't rub together because it gets so bloody hot here and i do want something that isn't too tight um i think you could go the compression route if you want but i was looking for something that was smooth under my clothes and wouldn't show you know any bumps or lumps or um or the waistband i don't want anyone to know i'm wearing shorts under there you know what i mean so anyway i'm really happy with how they came out and i have enough fabric to make a camisole i almost made two pairs of shorts but i saved the rest to make a um like a camisole or undershirt so pretty excited about that too now i just need to find a pattern i've gotten some good suggestions for that I did get one package this week and it was my order from when the cashmere blazer came out i ordered the print version of the pattern you get the pdf um, when you purchase it but i got the print version because i also got the kit with all the notions in it to make the blazer and if you remember this is the fabric right now i have print i have picked out for my blazer i have this as the outer and this as the lining you guys, I love these fabrics together. Like, I love them together. But I have to admit, do I think I'll wear this when it's blazer weather in my area? I'm not sure. And I knew that buying this, but I also knew that even if I don't use it for a blazer, I am happy to have these. Like, this would be a really fun non-woven, I mean, a non-stretch pair of pants. This would be a great blouse, right? 
So I may still be on the hunt for some blazer fabric, but um, I love these no matter what, and maybe it will just make me wear them anyway, right? So, so I thought I'd show you what came in this kit. It's a bunch of different stabilizers and interfacings. And it also is directed towards dark fabrics and obviously mine are so light so I may need to change just for that reason. So you get buttons, there are different colorways of things. You get some uh, tortoiseshell, kind of tortoiseshell buttons and some shoulder pads and then a few different fusible and non-fusible, well wait, I think this is fusible as well. Yeah, different stabilizers, fake horse hair braid, things like that. A little bit of fusible, um, I can't remember what this is called. It's kind of blanking my mind. There wasn't a little packing slip with it or anything. I'll have to go back to the site and print it out what it was. But uh, this is pretty exciting. My blazer's so long and anyone's welcome to join. It's very casual. You can use whatever blazer pattern you want. We're gonna be starting like late August, probably early September um, in the Northern Hemisphere. That would be good blazer wearing weather at the, by the end when we're done. I am not a couture sewist or a tailor. I've worked in tailoring shops. So it's gonna be an adventure for all of us, but I'm pretty ready for it. I'm, I'm excited. I think it'll be a really great project and so much easier than any of us think. So um, I'm down for it if you are. So join us if you want. You can just uh, go to my Facebook page and maybe say something there or ask to join the group there. It's a very casual, low key Facebook group. I'm not big on doing any of those things. So uh, you won't get like lots of stuff um, if you end up joining one of those. And if, but if you don't have to either, you can just join the stream and, and join along. It's gonna be really fun. There's a bunch of people doing it. So that it was exciting to get and I'm really glad I got the print version. I, I like the, getting the PDF, but this is a pretty, you know, this is a pretty stout pattern. Look at that thing. It's like an inch thick. <laughs> so <laughs> I also started this book that I've been mentioning. So today we took the top pattern in here. There's four and we made, um, we made it into a color block top with a pleated ruffle on the sleeve. It turned out really cute. I haven't sewn it yet. And then we picked from all these fabrics. So Sonia sent me, she's the author of the book. I didn't get, I don't get anything for doing this video. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just a really fun project that I thought I'd share with you. Um, and she sent me a ton of her fabrics from her own stash. And we picked all these to make a color block top out of. And I'm pretty excited seeing it all come together. It was pretty fun hearing like what people thought and what people liked and didn't like and stuff. And yeah, so let me see, I can show you the, these are the four patterns that you get in the book. They're in the in an envelope back here. Uh, lots of sizes, and then you get lots and lots of ways to like alter it into whatever you want, and I can show you what I'm doing. Also, there was this really cool, fun little thing someone made for her, so you can, you know, look through the window at your fabrics and see, oh, do I think that that's gonna work for that? You know, <laughs> it's kind of cool. I, it, which is really funny because this is how I used to always interview fabrics. I would take a photocopy of the pattern card or the pattern envelope. And then I would take my scissors and cut out the silhouette of the garment on the pattern envelope. And then I would hold it up far away you have to be kind of far away so you get kind of a closer scale of how the shirt's really gonna look. And I always made mine a little bigger. So it was really funny when she had these, I was like, oh my gosh, I that's how I used to always interview fabrics. Now I usually use Procreate, which is a drawing app. And um, I just, it only because I'm just kind of enjoying using it and it's kind of a niche. I know it's really niche, not even everybody has an iPad, let alone Procreate, and then the pencil. Definitely was one of my splurges and gifts to myself one year. It took me four or five years now to finally get around to even using it, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So this is what we're doing with this top. And when I started out today, I had a different top. It was still color blocked, but, and I just kind of came up with a few silhouettes. And then we kind of changed it drastically, 
And I didn't expect to show these sketches any, anywhere, but here I have a little time lapse replay and you can watch it. So that was originally how I had it with the um, more triangles, um, you know, lots of pie slices. And then we moved all those lines around and we made it so that the lines go over the shoulder um, to each other so that they meet, match up and same on the side seam. So, you know, we took this, we took this horizontal line. It goes over on the bust and then it goes under on the back, which is pretty cool. And we're gonna do a pleated sleeve ruffle. These are really rough, <laughs> really rough sketches, but it is really fun playing around with Procreate and it does this little time-lapse video. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing with all those fabrics right there. And I'm sewing it tomorrow on Saturday. And then next week I'll be doing a pin tuck sleeveless top maybe a pair of pants or a skirt. I'm not quite sure how much time I'll have, but I'm gonna do my best because I'm really having fun with this. I also been sewing all of my bags that I have for that order and I'm, I'm making progress with that, but I'm really missing making uploaded videos and how to's and things like that. And I've told myself I'm not allowed to until that bag order is done because that's kind of, it's like my dessert, you know, so trying to get it done and it's making me more motivated to get the bags done faster so that I can get back to making uploaded videos. Not that I have much time to do it, but I will once these bags are done and the bags are a really enjoyable project. You know, I can just like watch a movie or I can actually stream and, and do some production sewing. So that's kind of fun too, you know. Other than that, uh, my new routine of using the journal to do my daily planner and uh, has been working really, really good. I've had some of my calmest last couple of weeks, especially centered around work. And I started exercising again, which is really awesome. And now I've even been not eating any treats, which is really hard for me. I'm a, I'm a big time, got big time sugar tooth, you know, sweet tooth. Um, I'm only doing that on Sundays. So we'll see how long that lasts. I'm so bad. It's not, it's been pretty easy so far, mainly because it's watermelon season. And that is such a great treat for me. I know watermelon doesn't suit everybody, but for me, it really hits the spot. Um, and then uh, last night I made these little peanut butter balls with cacao nibs and what else? I, oh, and a little tiny bit of honey and oh, a little bit of unsweetened cocoa powder. And so that really hit the spot too, like the, the kind of richer chocolate spot. But there's no way I can live with ice, without ice cream at least a few times a week. I mean, I got to be honest, like I'm, I really love ice cream. I don't really think that's one of the worst things I could be eating. My daughter works at a candy store, you guys, so the struggle has been tough this past year. I, I got super into eating hot tamales because I'm not, I wasn't allergic to them, but for years and years and years, they really irritated me. Anything that was fake cinnamon really irritated my skin. I, I guess I have really sensitive skin and realize that's what, that I do. Uh, I'm covered in poison oak right now and I'm literally squirming because I'm kind of itchy. Um, and I never got poison oak until this year. Uh, and I think it's because I had this really, I'm sure I've mentioned this, but I had this really bad experience with agave last fall. And ever since then, now my skin is super sensitive. If I even get poked once with an agave, because there's tons of it on our property, I will um, erupt in little blisters now. And so I, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I got from candy to poison oak, but yeah, this um, past year, you know, kind of, kind of crazy as far as things like that go. But the candy definitely is such a nice treat. And oh, I know why, because of hot tamales. I got so into them, I started just fiending for hot tamales, you know, the little cinnamon candies. I'm a big black licorice fan and she has full access to a really good assortment of black licorice. And so that was really tough. And, and she also, like I never bought anything from the like chocolate case that they have because someone makes chocolates like peanut clusters and turtles and things like that. I never had bought anything from that case because I just felt like that was a slippery slope. There was plenty enough in the store. I love C's candy and I'm, I'm fine with that. I, my mom gives it to me twice a year and that is enough. <laughs> well, it's not, but you know. Um, and there's also a gelato case there. So she brought me home some of my favorite black licorice the other day and I put it in the, in the pantry. I was like, all right, you can't look at this till Sunday, but I keep thinking about it. I'm like, just one won't hurt. Just one. 
It's not the fact that one will hurt. I'm just trying to be a little better about how much sugar I've been eating because I've been eating a lot, you guys. And it, I have rosacea too, so it really aggravates it. This is so much. You don't really know, know about my skin issues. But <laughs> I think when you're this fair and you have those Scandinavian roots, you are, um, I can't even go out in the sun really, you know, like that's just how it is for me. And I don't, I don't mind. Like I don't, I, I'm still smiling, you know, I'm still smiling. It's no big deal. It's just, you deal with what you get. I don't ever stress about stuff like that at all. In fact, if I did, I'd probably be doing a better job of managing my poison oak right now. Anyway, that's what I'm up to these days, but I just wanted to say that the, my little journaling thing is going good. I made a ton of progress in my book. You guys are going to be happy. I'll finally have another book to share. All right, well, let me know what you're working on, and I don't know. What do you guys think of these colors? I'm going to put a little edge of this, just a really thin um, flat fold kind of piping without the piping in it in between some layers between like the sleeve and the ruff the ruffle and the body or and maybe across the horizontal line my chat really half of them are really against this pink but i'm so into it with these colors they look so good in this in this light it's a pretty good um and i was really into this polka dot and now when i saw it all cut up because i laid it all out we cut out all the pieces and i laid it all out i don't know it looks kind of um not vintage but it doesn't look very modern to me anymore. It's not funny how once you cut it up. So anyway, not my fabrics, but hey, what more fun can you have than playing else with playing with someone else's fabric stash? This was great. So have a great weekend, you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.